Okay. Uh, so today let's start seated and we'll start seated. I'm going to face the side of the mat because we're going to take a, a wider seat soles of the feet on the mat, knees going in the same direction as the toes, bring the hands back behind you sit recline. So just keep the legs like this sit recline chest can kind of lift up. So you keep the, the back long, close the eyes. Let's just take a few breaths here to start to settle in. You're getting an, a gentle hip opening with this. We'll deepen it as we go. Deep breath coming in through the nose, back out through the nose. Inhale in through the nose, hold it at the very top. Exhale out through the mouth. One more like that. Deep breath in. Hold it at the very top. Exhale out back through the mouth. This time in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Bring the hands forward in front of you. Keep the legs the same. Start to let the chest come through between the legs. Head and neck can release. If you can't reach the mat, you can use blocks. If it's really uncomfortable, go back to where we were with the hands back behind you. Try to stay with the same breath and not letting the knees cave in. So that takes away some of the hip opening. Keep them in line with the toes. Maybe after a few breaths, you start to walk the hands forward if you're feeling like the body's accepting the shape. And start to come back up to seated. Bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide. You can grab on, bring the feet in toward the body. You want this to be a little bit tighter. So we get into the hips. Knees are coming down toward the mat. You can grab onto the feet, lift the chest up high, take an inhale. Exhale, start to hinge forward, heart going over the toes, elbows can flare out, head and neck can release, but starting to get into the inner thighs with this hip opening. Come back up to seated, bring the hands to the outer knees to help the knees back together. Come forward to hands and knees. If you're on a hard surface, stay facing the side of the mat, knees will go on the mat. If you're on a soft surface, you can probably just leave the mat the way it is. If you're on a harder surface, fold the edges of the mat in. So you're doubling up the mat, just maybe like a third of the way. And then once you have the mat folded in, hands in front of the mat, bring the knees onto that extra padding, turn the toes away from you. So turn the toes out and you're coming into frog pose. So start to widen the knees. We're just starting out. It doesn't need to be your deepest frog. Maybe you keep the hands underneath the shoulders. You could bring the forearms down in front of you. That's obviously deeper. If it's too much, come back up onto the hands but find a place where you can be, stay focused on your breath and try to keep the hips in line with the knees. So sometimes the hips will go ahead of the knees or behind the knees to make this a little bit easier. See if you can figure out where hips in line with the knees is and stay there. This is one of our bigger hip openings and it can be a really tight area for a lot of us. So we did a couple of poses to gently start to open up uh, what we're getting into now. And now we're seeing what's available. 
still respecting the fact that we're early in our practice. You'll start to bring the chest back up slowly, inch the knees back together, coming back to tabletop. If the mat's folded, unroll it, turn to face forward. If you face the side, still staying on hands and knees, take a few rounds of cat cow breath on the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail on the exhale, round the spine, chin and toward the chest. Keep going, inhaling forward, exhaling back. One more. Back to a neutral spine. Step the feet back behind you to plank pose and lie all the way down onto your stomach. Tops of the feet come to the mat. Left arm comes out to the left. So hand and elbow in line with the shoulder, bend the elbow. So your fingertips are pointing straight forward. Make sure that elbow is still in line with the left shoulder. Then look to the right. Set the head down onto the mat, roll back onto this left shoulder. So with the elbow bent the way we have it, you may, may not be able to go back as far. It's a deeper shoulder opening. So make sure you listen to whatever messages you're getting back from the left side chest and shoulder area. Come back to center on the stomach. Same thing, other side. So start with the right arm extended, then bend at the elbow, line up the elbow with the shoulder. That's important. Look to the left, set the right side of the head down onto the mat, left hand in by the chest, and you start to roll back onto the right shoulder, taking your time, seeing where a nice opening starts to happen for you. And that top foot can go forward. It can stay stacked on the bottom foot. It can go back. It's wherever you feel like you can stay right where you need to be for the shoulder. So focus there first. Come back onto your stomach, reach the arms back behind you, press the hands like you're trying to press them together, press the tops of the feet down to the mat, lift and spread the chest just a little bit, not as high as high as you can go. Keep the shoulders away from the ears and slowly release. Arms can go down by the sides. You can turn the head to one side, let the ankles roll out. Two more like that. Press into the tops of the feet, lift the head, squeeze the arms together, lift and spread the chest, maybe a little bit higher this time. And next, exhale, release, turn the head the other way. Arms can go down by the sides. Feeling the heart rate start to pick up. Third and final one, Shalambasana, tops of the feet down, squeeze the hands together, lift and spread the chest. Keep pulling the hands back toward the feet. Keep stretching the toes over the back of the mat. And rest. This time, bring the hands to the mat, come up to hands and knees, take child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. You want to bring the hips back as close as you can to the heels if your knees are okay with that. If they're not, then you lift the hips up. Forehead comes down, arms reach out in front of you. Come forward to hands and knees, back to tabletop, stack the shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees, step the right toes back behind you. Keep the toes down on the mat, 
hug the core in, reach the heart forward, lift the right heel up to hip height. So try not to go higher than that. And then turn the right toes out to the right, bring the right knee to hip height. So you're bringing the right knee out to the side and then bring the right leg back to where it was extending it back behind you. So we'll do that two more times. Just the right leg moves, bring the right knee forward, heart reaches forward, belly hugs in, come back to uh, leg extended back behind you. One more time, exhale, right knee out to the side, get it up in line with the hip and send it back behind you. Right knee comes underneath the right hip. This time, left toes step back behind you, lift the left leg up, heel in line with the hip, fire up the core, outer left hip, turn the left toes out to the left, knee comes forward in line with the hip, heart reaching forward, core in, back to center, extend that leg back behind you. Exhale, knee out to the left, so it's just half of awkward airplane. Inhale, lengthen the leg back behind you. Last one, knee out to the left, get it in line with the hip and send that left leg back behind you. Left knee comes back down to the mat. So we'll add the arms on this next round. Right toes step back behind you, lift the heel in line with the hip. Come up onto the left fingertips, reach the left arm forward like you're gonna shake someone's hand. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, cactus the arm, knee out to the side. Inhale, extend. Exhale, everything out to the side. Inhale, extend. Last time this side, exhale, bring it out to the side. Inhale, extend. Left hand comes down, right knee comes down. Left toes step back behind you. Lift the left heel up to hip height. Right arm reaches forward. Lengthen on your inhale, exhale, cactus the arm and the knee. Back to center, exhale, bring it out to the side. Back to center, last one, exhale, out to the side. Back to center, right hand comes down, left knee comes down. Walk the hands forward so they're ahead of the shoulders. Tuck the toes if you haven't already. Lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Here for several breaths. So if you want movement, find some movement, maybe pedaling out the feet. You could also put a deep bend in the knees or widen your stance. Just don't want the feet to be any narrower than hip width distance. Belly hugs in so you can lift the hips up a little bit higher, descending the heels down toward the mat. Then right leg lifts up and back, three-legged down dog. Look forward, right foot outside of the right hand. Wide lizard lunge. Chest is reaching forward. Hands can stay right underneath the shoulders. Back knee can stay up if the hips open enough. If it feels like it needs to come down, keep it down. Back to downward facing dog, step the right foot back, left leg reaches up and back, left foot outside of the left hand, reach the heart forward, trying to take the rounding out of the upper back. Back to downward facing dog, bend the knees, look forward, walk the feet up between the hands, maybe keep the legs straight as you bring them up to the top of the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Two more like that one. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Last one. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. This time, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower all the way down to the mat. Come up for cobra, tops of the feet down, hands back by the lower ribs, lift and spread the chest, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, release, 
downward facing dog. You could take hands and knees or plank to get to downward facing dog. Deep inhale in through the nose, back out through the nose, staying with that Ujjayi breath. One more here. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up, exhale forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, shift forward onto the toes, bend the elbows halfway, cobra or up dog, whichever one you feel ready for. Exhale, release, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Can be a few steps. You can walk them up or just one big step. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Arm circle all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga, cobra or up dog. Cobra's feeling good today. I might stick with it. Exhale, release, downward facing dog. If you do get in the habit of always doing cobra or up dog, it is nice to switch it up if that's available. Cobra builds the strength for up dog. Bend the knees, look forward, bring the feet up to the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale fold. Arms circle all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Point the knuckles back behind you. Broaden across the chest. Put a little bend in the knees. Fold forward over the legs. If the hands need to come apart, that's fine. Just keep uh, the hands squeezing together without the interlacing of the fingers. Try to shift the weight forward into the balls of the feet. Get a little lighter in the heels. Shoulders are going toward the hips. Head and neck release. Switch the weaving of the fingers one finger over if they're interlaced so we can keep things even. Maybe the head starts to get closer to the legs. You have to hug the belly in and then let the head and neck go to make that happen. Hands come back down to the mat. Heel toe the feet a little bit wider. So heels in, toes out. Come down for a yogi squat. If you can come all the way down, great. If you can't, keep the heels down as long as possible. And then the hands can stay down to support you. The hips can come all the way down. Then you do it. Elbows inside the knees, hands come together in front of the heart, chest lifts, malasana. I've been trying to do this more, especially when I'm uh, watching TV or doing something where I can watch TV and maybe do a squat at the same time. And then I'll just feel like I have nice open hips. Maybe a little bit more productive physically. All right, hands come down to the mat, straighten the legs, heel toe the feet, back to hip width distance. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, fingertips down to the mat, step the left foot back behind you, coming into a runner's lunge. So fingertips are down on the mat, chest is reaching forward. Right hand comes inside the right foot, Walk the hands over to the left. So you're facing the side of the mat. Heels in, toes out. 
keep both feet flat on the mat. Just bend the left knee, straighten the right leg. Hands are down in front of the shoulders. It's like a half skandhasana. So you're not going deep into the side lunge. And you can always keep your side lunges this high. You don't have to go all the way down. I'll give you the opportunity though later if you want. Come back to center, toes pointing straight forward. Bring the hands to the hips. Come up to standing. Angle in the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out. Find warrior two facing the top of the mat. Lift the front palm up, reverse warrior. Take this left palm, push it forward at the same time. Like you're pushing something away from you. So right arm reaching up and back, left hands pushing forward. And then take this to extended side angle, right forearm, right thigh, left arm reaches up and over guide that right knee with the right forearm so that it's going straight over the second and third toe. You could even look down and make sure that's happening. Your right hip will automatically go into alignment. Look up underneath the left arm, get long. Hands come back down to the mat. You're on the ball of the back foot, widen the stance a little bit, step the left foot up to meet the right foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold fingertips to the mat. Right foot steps back behind you. Start with the runner's lunge. Stack the left knee over the left ankle, chest reaching forward. Left hand inside the left foot. Walk the hands over to the right. Heels in, toes out, not as wide as you can go. Keep the chest reaching forward, fingertips down in front of you. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg. Both feet are down, chest reaching forward. Back to center, point the toes to point, uh, straighten the toes so they go forward, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing, angle on the right toes, turn the left toes all the way out, warrior two. That same reverse warrior we did on the first side, flip the left palm up, right palm's gonna go forward, reach the left arm up and back. Left forearm, left thigh, right arm up and over the ear, guide that left knee in line with the second and third toe, open the chest toward the sky. Hands come down to the mat. You're on the ball of the back foot. Widen the stance a little bit. Right foot comes up to meet the left foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full. Bend the knees. Hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Any way you want back to downward facing dog. So you have an opportunity for a vinyasa, but you can also skip them when you want to. Don't feel obligated to do them. Think about what they're adding or taking away from your practice and make your decision based on what you need without beating yourself up. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, step, walk, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale, fold. Come to chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up. All the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Let's do two rounds of Surya Namaskar B. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, optional vinyasa on the way back to downward facing dog. Right away, right foot steps up between the hands, left heel spins down flat, warrior one. Find, uh, we'll hold this one for a few breaths. So find the alignment, square the hips, lift the chest, deep lunge in the front knee, back leg is straight. Gaze can go up. 
One more inhale. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, down dog or vinyasa. Left foot steps up between the hands, spin the right heel down flat, Virabhadrasana one. Right inner thigh goes back, left inner thigh goes forward, belly in, chest up, maybe the gaze goes up. One more inhale and exhale. Hands come back down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Make your way back, downward facing dog. Knees bend. Look forward to the top of the mat. Bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, chair pose. All the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. One breath per movement. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat. Make your way back, downward facing dog with or without a vinyasa. Right foot steps up between the hands, left heel down flat, warrior one, forward facing warrior. Exhale, hands come back down to the mat, downward facing dog, however you wanna get there. Left foot steps up between the hands, right heel down, warrior one. And exhale, hands come back down to the mat, Make your way back, downward facing dog. Three breaths in dog. Knees bend, look forward, bring the feet up to the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Come into a yogi squat. Widen the feet, heels in, toes out, bring the hips down. Hands can still stay down for support. Just make sure those heels are rooted on something. They're not lifted. You could even roll up the mat a little bit to bridge that gap. See if you can open up the knees a little bit wider, lift the chest a little bit more. Make sure you're lifting the pelvic floor wherever you are. Hands come down to the mat, straighten the legs. Heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. Inhale up halfway, exhale, fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Interlace the fingers one finger over, so the unusual way, point the knuckles back behind you, put a little bend in the knees, fold forward over the legs, knuckles back behind the head. Up to you how straight the legs are. If you have lower back stuff, maybe you keep a de deep bend in the knees and rest the chest on the thighs. If your lower back's fine, take this deep, take this forward fold deep. So head comes closer to the legs, weight goes more into the balls of the feet. Switch the grip if the fingers are interlaced, one finger over. Hands come back down to the mat. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, fingertips to the mat. Left foot steps back behind you, runner's lunge. Right hand inside the right foot. Turn the toes to the left, walking the hands to the left. Heels in, toes out. Skandasana, you can stay with the feet flat. If you feel open enough, you could bend the left knee, straightening the right leg. Maybe the hands come together in front of the heart, but they don't have to. So many different versions of this. Hands come back down in front of the shoulders. Toes point forward toward the side of the mat, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing with strong legs, angle in the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out, warrior two.
flip the front palm up. That left palm's gonna come forward for reverse warrior. Push the left arm forward, right arm up and back. Side angle, extended side angle pose. Right forearm, right thigh, left arm reaches up and over. You're welcome to bring the right hand inside the foot if you want a deeper opening on that right hip and it feels available. If that's happening, the right arm and the right knee press into one another and you're looking up and underneath that left arm. Hands come back down to the mat, frame the front foot, you're on the ball of the left foot, step the left foot up to meet the right foot, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, right foot steps back behind you. Start with the runner's lunge. Left hand inside the left foot. Walk the hands to the right. Heels in, toes out, some version of skandhasana. It could be different on this side if your body has something different going on on each side. Make sure you're bringing that left heel in toward the body instead of pushing it away from you. Hands come down to the mat. Straighten the legs, toes point forward, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes out, warrior two facing the top of the mat. Lower the hips, lift the chest. So you get as long as you can in the torso. Keep that, flip the left palm up, right palm goes forward, pushing anything away you don't need. Lift that left arm up and back in your reverse warrior. Left forearm, left thigh, right arm up and over the ear. Stay here or option to bring the left hand inside the foot. That right side of the rib cage, it's going down toward the mat. So the left uh, or the left side chest starts to lift up. So you get that nice angle instead of a rounding on the right side of the torso. Bring the hands to the mat. Frame the front foot, right foot steps up to meet the left. Inhale up halfway. Exhale full, bend the knees, hands to the mat. Make your way back, downward facing dog with or without a vinyasa. Few breaths in downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, full back to that yogi squat. Heel toe the feet as wide as you need to, heels in, toes out, hips down, maybe hands in front of the heart. We'll play with this one, so you're welcome to stay here. Option for crow pose if you feel like playing with an arm balance. If you want to play with an arm balance, you can bring the hands down in front of you, lift the hips up. You have to bring the heels together, knees stay wide, hands come in, and then the outer knee or the inner knees are hugging in toward the upper arms. Look forward, belly hugs in. Maybe you lift one heel, maybe you lift the other and they touch. Bakasana. Come back to your squat, hands come together in front of the heart. Bring the hands down to straighten the legs, heel toe the feet back to hip width distance. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Keep the hands together in front of the heart. Find a focal point straight in front of you. As you press into the hands, feel that width start to happen across the chest. Start to shift the weight over to the right foot. Hover the left foot away from the mat. So both legs are straight, but you're hugging the femur into the hip socket. So you could, can create some space between the sole of the foot and the mat. Warrior three. Take your time. You can put a little bend in that standing leg. Try to rotate the inner left thigh up toward the sky. Chest is still reaching forward. Level off the hips. 
push that left leg back behind you. Then bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the left foot, landing in a lunge. Hands can come down to frame the front foot. Right hand inside the right foot, walk the hands over to the left. Heels in, toes out, skandasana, bend the left leg straight in the right, side lunge. Hands come back down to the mat, straighten the legs, toes forward, hands to the hips, core in, press yourself all the way up to standing, angle on the left toes, turn the right toes out, Virabhadrasana two, facing the top of the mat. Flip the front palm up, left palm's going forward for this reverse warrior. Reach that right arm up and back, push away what you don't need with the left hand. Extended side angle pose, right forearm, right thigh, left arm up and over or hand inside the right foot. Option for a half bind if you want. Left arm can go behind the back. See what that feels like. If your hand's down inside the foot, maybe you take the full bind if you feel like the shoulders and hips are open enough. Keep the lunge in the front knee. Release the full bind if you have it. Right hand down, left arm up and over. Bring the hands down to the mat, chest facing forward. Step the left foot up to meet the right foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. You're coming all the way back up to standing. Circle the arms on the inhale. Bring the hands together overhead. Down in front of the heart. Find your focal point in front of you. Press into the hands, shoulders away from the ears. Shift the weight over to the left foot. Hover the right foot away from the mat. Take your time, Virabhadrasana three. So go slow. Try to find the strength that you're building into the shape. Keep pressing that right leg away from you. Core hugs in. That right big toe is pointing toward the center of the mat. It might even feel like you're pigeon toeing the right foot. Carefully bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the right foot, landing light in a lunge. Hands come down to the mat, left hand inside the left foot. Walk the hands over to the right, side lunge, heels in, toes out, bend the right knee, straighten the left. Hands can come together in front of the heart. Hands down in front of the... Uh, on the mat, straighten the legs, toes point forward, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing, angle on the right toes, turn the left toes out, Virabhadrasana two. Flip the front palm up, right palm goes forward, reverse warrior. Extended side angle, forearm to thigh, right arm up and over, or possibly left hand inside the foot. Stay here or option to play with a half bind, right arm behind the back, maybe a full bind if that seems available. Release the full bind if you have it. Right arm up and over. Hands to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Right foot steps up to meet the left foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Hands to the mat any way you want. Back to downward facing dog. One more inhale in through the nose. Side out the mouth. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, find that yogi squat, malasana. Heels in, toes out, hands come together in front of the heart. 
then hands down, straighten the legs, heel toe the feet, back to hip width distance, inhale up halfway, exhale fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Keep pressing into the hands, shift the weight over to the right foot, hover the left foot away from the mat, keep the chest lifted, warrior three. Bend the standing leg, reach back with the left foot, hands come down to the mat, runner's lunge, right hand inside the right foot, walk the hands over to the left, heels in, toes out, skandasana, bend the left leg, straighten the right, hands down to the mat, straighten the legs, toes pointing to the side of the mat, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing, Angle on the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out. Little different this time. Arms out wide, front leg is straight, triangle pose. Hip shift back, reach the right arm forward, bring the right arm down, left arm up. Warrior two, bend that front knee, look over the right hand. Flip the front palm up, reverse warrior, left palm goes forward. Extended side angle, maybe right hand inside the foot, left arm up and over. Maybe a half bind, left arm behind the back, maybe a full bind. Okay, just an option to play. You can skip this if you want to. If you have the full bind, look down at that right foot, step the left foot forward, see if you can keep the bind. So feet are side by side. Bend the knees, right heel will lift up. Standing firm on that left leg, come up, play with birds of paradise, maybe. And that right leg doesn't need to be straight. You can just focus on standing, seeing if you can get the chest open, left thigh strong, and then maybe the right leg starts to straighten. Set it back down, see if you can keep the bind. And if you still are here, unravel the arms, you're in a forward fold. So we're on a forward fold at the top of the mat. Let's keep the feet hip width distance apart, clasp opposite elbows, let the head and the neck go. Hands come back down to the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Arms circle all the way up to standing. Hands come together down in front of the heart. Other side, and then we're done. So look forward, shift the weight over to the left foot, hover the right foot. Warrior three. Bend the standing leg, reach back with the ball of the right foot, land light into your lunge. Hands come down to the mat. Left hand inside the left foot, walk the hands over to the right, heels in, toes out, bend the right leg, straighten the left, side lunge. Hands down in front of you, straighten the legs, toes forward, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing. Angle on the right toes, turn the left toes out, triangle pose, arms out wide, hips shift back, reach that left arm forward, then bring the left arm down, right arm up. So you want those legs to be as straight as you can get them, core hugging in, arms spreading away from one another. Warrior two, bend the left knee, bring the chest up. Flip the front palm up, right palm goes forward, reverse warrior. Extended side angle, maybe left hand inside the foot, right arm up and over. Maybe half bind, right arm can go behind the back, maybe a full bind. If you have the full bind and it feels okay to play here, look down at the left foot, Step the right foot forward. See if you can keep the full bind. 
Then shift the weight over to the right foot. Left heel will lift. Outer right hip needs to hug in. If it swings out to the side, you'll lose your balance coming up. Hug the core in, press into the right foot. Come up to standing. See if you can get the hips or the sit bones side by side, chest lifted, core hugging in. Maybe work toward a straighter left leg, but it doesn't have to be all the way straight. Then slowly start to bend the left knee, set the left foot back down to the mat gently, un uh, release the bind, come into your forward fold, clasp opposite elbows, let the head and the neck go. Everyone's in a forward fold, top of the mat. Opposite crossing of the forearms. Hands come to the mat, inhale up halfway, exhale full, bend the knees, hands to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog, opportunity for a vinyasa if you'd like one. Right foot steps up between the hands, set the back knee down, reach the arms up overhead. Cactus the arms. So get the elbows in line with the shoulders and try to create space across the chest and the upper back equally. Open the chest to the right. You won't be able to go that far, but this is your twist. Your shoulders are more open today. We've done a lot of shoulder opening in addition to the hips. So maybe you can find a deeper twist. Come back to center with the chest. Right hand comes to the sacrum, left arm reaches up, and you can play with a back bend here. So hug the belly in, reach the chest up. Then bring the gaze back forward. Left hand comes down underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up to the sky. Back knee can stay down or you can tuck the back toes and lift the back knee. Right hand comes down to the mat, step back, downward facing dog. We're going straight over to the other side. Step the left foot up between the hands, set the back knee down, reach the arms forward all the way up. Cactus the arms, elbows in line with the shoulders, create space, equal amount of space between the chest and the upper back, hug the core in, open the chest to the left. So head still over the hips, great. Come back to center with the chest. Right, uh, left hand comes to the sacrum, right arm reaches up. Lengthening the right side of the body. Tailbone to pubic bone, pubic bone to tailbone. Gaze comes forward, right hand down to the mat underneath the shoulder, left arm reaches up, open the chest to the left, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Left hand comes down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Last vinyasa if you really want one, if you're done with those, just hold downward facing dog. child's pose. Knees come down to the mat, big toes together, sit the hips back, forehead down. Arms out in front of you, or maybe the arms back behind you would feel better today. Back to the hands, just rest on the mat outside the feet. And all, this one also depends on how high the hips are. If you have the hips up higher because of your knees, it might be too difficult to get the arms back behind you. In that case, you would skip this. Okay, hands down to the mat, lift the head and the chest, come forward to seated. So legs out in front of you, you'll probably need to scoot forward on your mat. Come on down onto your back. Let's play with bridge pose. So heels in toward the hips, press into the feet, lift the hips up, interlace the fingers underneath you. See if you can lift the chest a little bit more, spreading it open. Legs are strong. And slowly release, 
hips come back down to the mat. Two more rounds of back bends. Stick with bridge pose. If you want to take something deeper, you're welcome to. Just be mindful of your energy level and where your personal practice is with back bends. Press into the feet, lift the hips up, interlace the fingers, bridge pose, unless you're taking Urdva, that's fine. And release, hips come back down to the mat, rest. Third and final, final round of back bends. Come all the way up, interlace the fingers or hands back by the ears if you're going all the way up. Wherever you are, lengthen the front side of the body. Take one more inhale and exhale, release. Once the hips touch down, bring the knees just enough so that you could grab onto the knees with the hands, hook one foot on top of the other, open up the knees wide, and then you can rock side to side. Only if rocking feels okay in your lower back, if it bothers it, you can also just hold still. Switch the hook of the feet, other foot on top. Set the feet down to the mat, press into the feet, scoot the hips over to the right, bring the knees over to the left, reach the right arm back behind you, find a reclined spinal twist. And switch the direction, feet come to the mat, scoot the hips over to the left, knees to the right, left arm reaches back behind you, recline spinal twist. This time, take the left arm, bring it all the way over to the right so you're lying on your right side. Use the left hand to bring yourself up to seated. And once you come to seated, we'll come into a hip opening. We're gonna come back into frog pose because that's kind of a fun thing to start with and then come into at the end of your practice. So I'm gonna turn to face the side of the mat, come to hands and knees. I need extra padding because I'm on a hard surface. So I'll I'll just fold the edges of the mat in to double them up. And that should be enough hands down in front of you. Knees start to go a little bit wider, just enough. So you can turn the toes out and get the inner edges of the feet down on the mat. And then from here, start to widen the knees, try to keep the hips in line with the knees. You can feel it's easier if you go forward or if you go backward, once you find center, and you find your place where you can be with frog pose, maybe you bring the forearms down. If you can go all the way down, chest down to the ground, go for it. But just find a place where it feels like you're getting a uh, good length and space in the lower half of your body. And you'll start to slowly bring the chest up. If you're down pretty low, you might need to inch the knees together first so that you can get the hands underneath the shoulders. It's a delicate uh, exit. Lengthen the mat, 
if it was folded in and then come to seated. So legs out in front of you, seated on your mat, shift side to side. So you feel like the sit bones are underneath you, reach the arms up to the sky, take an inhale. And on the exhale, forward fold over the legs, Paschimottanasana. The feet are right there. You can easily reach them. That's fine. But try not to take the shoulders out of place to touch the feet. Let the head and the neck go. Lower back stuff, bring the knees in toward the chest, bend the knees, and then you can clasp opposite elbows underneath the knees. Let the head and the neck go. And come back up to seated, soles of the feet to the mat, scoot yourself forward, come down onto your back, finding Shavasana. So legs extended out in front of you. If you have anything going on with the lower back or it just feels tender, an alternative to lying with the legs out is soles of the feet to the mat, feet wide, knees together. And that brings some space to the lower back, arms down by the sides, find your version of Shavasana. Close the eyes, maybe taking one more breath in through the nose. Side out the mouth. And go back to your normal breathing. Complete stillness other than the breath. You'll start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Stretch the arms overhead, reach out through the legs. Bend the left leg, sole the left foot to the mat. Roll over to your right side. Head can lie in the arm. Left hand on the ground in front of you. Press into the left hand. Bring yourself up to a comfortable seat or kneeling, however you want to be on your mat, a meditative position, chest lifts, hands come together, slight bow of the head, honoring and acknowledging your heart and spirit, as well as everyone around you.
bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining today. There was a potpourri of poses in that class. I guess there always are, but there were some that surprised me even. So <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.